Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, we're taking a look at the first TKL I have reviewed from Akko. And it's kind of odd for me to say since TKL is basically my favorite layout. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like anything from a 40% all the way up to a 96%, 1800. I'm not the biggest fan of full size because they're just a lot of wasted space kind of in the middle. So, while I have been a big proponent of Akko's, I, I mean, I love their keyboards. There was only one that I had an issue with, and they've upgraded it since, and it's much better. Um, their keyboards are quite good. Um, I have purchased some when I first started doing uh, this channel, and I had an issue with one, and Akko's customer support was so helpful i was it kind of um it kind of set up my expectations and because another company the one that shall not be named starts with an e ends with maker they they resold Akko keyboards i think they may still resell them although i don't think they are i'm not sure but anyway i expect that well Akko gave me such great customer service apple maker will give me great customer service as well and i was sadly mistaken but anyway all the Akko keyboards i've reviewed lately the last one being the um mod 007 b polycarbonate he and that keyboard i've got to say i never saw a mechanical slash optical keyboard i don't think they ever made one if they did let me know down in the comments below because i'd love to take a look at it but I think that that could easily have been done where you could have the little detectors on the side because optical switches, instead of making a connection with the leaf spring, it basically blocks a little light that's going on either side of the middle pull of the, uh, of the switch. And that counts as an actuation. But there's no reason that you can't have those two little light detectors or basically it's just a like a, it's kind of like the I don't know if you ever walked into a 7-eleven and it goes ding, ding. it's those little light detectors it's basically the same thing as the detectors on garage doors so you know to make sure that the garage door doesn't shut on you or your kid um and that's basically you know it's the simple explanation or of how optical switches work but there's no reason why they couldn't have added a hot swap socket in there and you know wire that to that same you know um wired in tandem basically so that either the optical switch or a mechanical switch would both trigger an actuation event that would send back the microcontroller and then down onto the pc but when i saw that they created a keyboard that's not only he so it accepts he switches which allow you to set the actuation point you know, you can go from a tenth of a millimeter all the way up to four millimeters or anything in between, um, which to me seems pretty cool. Um, as a person that doesn't game all that often, and the games that I do play are ones that require too much speed or graphics. I mean, the, the most intensive game graphically that I play is No Man's Sky, and I've never found any keyboard that I use to be too slow. Uh, but I could see, and I know plenty of people that are both, you know, coders, programmers, as well as gamers. And to be able to say, all right, I'm going to set the actuation at four when I'm coding because I type hard and, or whatever the case may be, but then it's time to go game and you can actually do it through just the keyboard and then set it to a lower actuation point and then go and game it's that's perfect because it becomes like a two-in-one keyboard on there so i haven't seen any other company do that i haven't seen any other keyboards that has the ability to accept both magnetic he hall effect i haven't seen a single keyboard that will accept both magnetic hall effect or he switches as well as standard mechanical switches so i think akko kind of did something really cool there and they have been innovative for a while. I mean, I remember when the mod series first came out and I mean, I was like, wow. I mean, they were some of the first aluminum 
keyboards that were affordable and they came in a multitude of colors. I've got a couple myself and I mean, they're just nice keyboards. Um, the Mod 007 was obviously the most popular one and they've made several revisions of that since. But this one was actually sent out to me by Akko Gear EU or Europe. Um, this is the ISO version of, it's the ISO-UK version of the 5087. But this will be my first Akko TKL that I'll be taking a look at. Now, it does look to be multi-mode or three-mode, and it does come preloaded with, I, I've never seen that colorway, or if I have, I can't recall it. it Akko is pretty good at creating some of their own colorways. I mean, they did have some, some that were similar to others before once came in the collector boxes. Unfortunately, they discontinued those because I really enjoyed those and I didn't get a chance to get all of them. But the one that I really missed out on was the, the red and blue samurai in one box. And it was pretty well priced when it was available. But I did I was like, oh, I'll buy it one of these days. And the next guy I know, they were discontinued and I missed out on it. But if you have a set that you don't want and you won't sell it to me, let me know. <laughs> anyway, so today we're taking a look at the Akko 5087B+. And usually the B at the end of Akko means that it is wireless. The B+, I'm not sure what that is. I've seen that on some newer ones, but maybe we'll find out as we get into it. So without further delay, let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we've got inside. All right, first I'd like to take a look at what accessories we have in the box. All right, so in the box we have some extra switches. Actually, this colorway kind of looks like the dark hammerhead. It's just the mods that are different. But it's always nice when they include an extra set of keycaps because, you know, you want, want, might want to modify uh, the mappings and move some keys around or... You might want to take this keycap set off and put it on another keyboard and load up a different keycap set on here. So I like the fact that Akko does this quite regularly on their fully pre built keyboards. Plus one Akko. We have a wire keycap only puller. We have a, um, this is really an I chip, IC chip puller, but it's a, an aluminum. A lot of people are buying these favorite. I, I like some of them, uh, though I've just gotten used to the standard uh, double-sided ones but these do work pretty nicely oh it looks like we also have some modifier keys as well oh, so I thought that was a different color oh no it is it's flipped all right so that is pretty cool we really have an entire keycap set when you count what's on the keyboard we have an entire keycap set that we can load on another keyboard load up the keycap set on here now, I'll be coming back to this one in the near future to mod it because that's what I do. I know I've got a long list of keyboards I've got to come back to and mod. Um, I've been on a review streak, but it's helping me to um, not only collect some keyboards and learn from them, but get some better ideas as I move forward and you know find new ways of doing things. I'm working on a video right now to try to replicate uh, the pet the PET plastic mod at home um, very easily so and I'm going to try three different plastics and test them all on keyboard side by side the same keyboard with the same switches with the same mod you know PET mod and um, and see you know the differences between those three different plastics and see which one sounds better or I mean some might think one sounds better some might think another sounds better but to provide a baseline of sound of how each one of those will make particular keyboard sound we also have a nice rubberized usb a to usb c cable with caps on it so they don't get dirty i knew there was one more thing in there oh hey sweet all right so the plus may mean that it's uh 2.4 but on this one at least they have added the ako to i Vaguely recall that the last one was purple, but didn't say Akka. So who knows? Maybe they listened to me when I said that, hey, at least put the brand uh, that this 2.4 gigahertz dongle goes to because it's going to make it a lot easier for me if, you know, in case it falls out, gets lost, 
and then I find it. I'm like, what keyboard does it go to? So I do appreciate when they include their logo on the dongle because it makes it a lot easier to find. And do be careful not to miss the Oppo um, 2.4 gigahertz receiver that's in there. And thankfully they have, um, I don't know if they listen to me because I remember the last one I got, it was purple, but it didn't say Oppo. This one says Oppo on it. So there is a big likelihood that it's going to be much easier to find the keyboard that this goes to because they're not trying to go through all of your keyboards, only a particular brand. So I do appreciate that. So taking a look at the keyboard, we also have a very nice user manual. Um, appears to come in several languages and it goes over the hotkeys, system commands for both Mac and Windows, backlight settings, Bluetooth feature, setup instructions, and lighting effects, as well as their warranty and service statement. And another thing that I appreciate when manufacturers do is when they include a dust cover. Many of us work in environments that, I mean, it's almost impossible, unless you're working in like a triple filtered HEPA clean room that has like 99.1% of all, you know, micro things floating in the air cleaned out, you're going to be dealing with dust, you know, dead bugs, all of that. Keeping a cover on your keyboard will keep it cleaner, which would mean which will mean your keyboard will last longer. So including these is super cheap for manufacturers, but it makes a big difference for consumers. And if you have a keyboard that has this, I cannot recommend enough to use it anytime you're not going to be using the keyboard for an extended period of time. And here we are with the Akko 5087B Plus ISO. Now, I got to say, I grew up on ISOs. Um, I'm a dual citizen, so I grew up half my childhood in the States and half my childhood in Costa Rica. Though, um, when keyboards first started coming out, I mean, this was standard for all before ISO and ANSI started the whole thing. Um, ISO is International Standards Organization and ANSI is American National Standards Institute, I believe. I, don't quote me on that. I'm just pulling off the top of my head. But the keyboards I had always had this upside down fat L. That's not what I call it, but it's a key that I got used to. Um, whether it was a, a USA keyboard or um, an ISO. Uh, well, we did use the Spaniards, the SP in Costa Rica, but, you know, so that you have the Enya. Although most operating systems nowadays will allow you to hit a combination, hit the tilde key, actually, obviously the tilde over here, and then hit the key that you want to put the tilde or put the, um, the accent mark on the key. Anyway, I know, unfortunately, there's a lot of keycap sets that say they're ISO, but they only include the enter key. When you go to look for these extra keys, the smaller shift, um, the uh, backspace and the pipe over here, it just, they aren't there. And it's like, uh, where'd you go? Uh, where are you? Uh, so it's unfortunate, though, I will say that some sets that I know always carry those um, are like the Ghost Judges set. And Ghost Judges, and Akko's, obviously, Akko's got a good selection of key cams. Um, their white on black or black on white uh, building block sets is really nice. I actually had purchased one, and then a friend of mine really fell in love with them, so I gave it to him with a keyboard that I built for him. So, But I got to get a hold of another set of those because I really, really like the keys. Actually, I kept a couple of them. Um, that I keep around here, like, like the um, the accent key or the novelty key, I should say. I don't know. It's a cat skull with a headphone, but I like it. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what their logo means because they don't sell audio equipment that I know of. They might, but I don't think so. But I think it's a cool little logo. That's just me. So taking a look at the keyboard, we have a very similar design as to say the um, the 
5075. Um, the way that the uh, the construction is, you've got an area here where I'm going to guess the batteries probably somewhere in here or might even have two batteries. They both feel pretty nuts right there. Hmm. There's a little bit of ringing. Check out these stabilizers. Ooh, I like that they're purple. I think these are the double TPU. And it looks like we have some... Uh, I've been meaning to get some of these. I think these are the Akko Cream Black V3. Let me make sure. No, these are the Akko Jelly Black. So, they're about a 50 gram force linear. No, so, unfortunately, they come uh, unlubed. The ping's not horrible, but it's definitely noticeable. Now, let's see about these stabilizers. Oh. Okay. So I think these are the TPU ones, but I'm not certain. Let me see. They are lubricated. And if we take a look inside. Oh, no, these are the standard. I want to say they're POM, but I'm not quite sure. Those new TPU ones, I think they're. it's the first revision that I got a hold of, and I didn't quite like, but then I got a hold of a new set, and then I found that those are actually pretty good. So we have some decent stabilizers. Um, oop, make sure to clip that into place. that are actually pretty smooth. Now, one thing I wanted to check here is... Yep, does not look like there is a, the capacity or the capability to install screw and stabilizers, unfortunately. And the plate... On this plate, oh, it's steel. So that's where we got the ringing. We have a combination of uh, some um, unlubed switches. That I mean, tiniest amount of lube would really make the difference. So if I take my handy switch opener now, this was a. Uh, um, sent to me by Pulling Keys. Pulling Keys is a great small company, uh, family run, and it really is family run. Everybody is a part of, they, everyone has their own little part that they do. Um, and it's really cool. It's, they're friends of mine. And, um, but they've grown a lot over the last year. Uh, they became a Gazoo um, authorized reseller, which I think has helped them a lot, but they've, uh, They've been adding switches quite regularly and some really nice switches. Now, they have been known to ask me for opinions of what switches to get. They'll hand me a few sample switches and I'll be like, I like this one. I don't like this one. And I like this one because of this, this and that. And this one, eh. So, and no, they don't always take my recommendations. But for the most part, uh, they at least appreciate, you know, somebody else being uh, a neutral voice in, you know, what they decide to stock in their in their store and that's another thing if you're in the u.s now they currently only ship to the u.s they're working to do more international um but uh they ship out the next business day and their prices on switches besides the gazoo because those have to be set at a certain price from what i understand um but all of the switches they've added to their store whenever i look at other stores um, u.s based stores i mean obviously can't count AliExpress, but when I take a look at other U.S. stores that carry those same switches, pulling keys has always been cheaper on the switches than the other stores. So, 
that's that's just you know one of my things now I, i'm used to aqua having wing latch switches but this one doesn't so I'm going to have to flip to the other side now we can open it i just want to lube one just to kind of get a feel for the difference nope oh, there we go so oh no no now real quick this is just the method that i use for looping switches it works for me it may not work for everybody but i have um, what's called g lube in here which is a gazoo lube it's a mix of uh micro lube ball and molly coat and i actually have the ingredients to make my own and one of these days i'll make a video on it i promise but i take these uh basically uh like a dull syringe tip and these little bottles and i put the uh because I, 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 to me, the, the lube is kind of like in the middle between a 105 and a 205. And but it just works for me for everything. So I like to put a little dab on the back of the leaf spring. And people have asked me why on the back of the leaf spring. Well, it's metal and it can reverberate. So it's part of what makes the thing. And in some switches that have had the uh, spring lube, but the leaf the spring leaf not lube that's where the source of the spring is coming so if you're ever like man i've lubed these switches but they're still pinging what's going on adding just the tiniest amount of lube on the back and i say on the back of the leaf spring because that works for both linear and tactile if you were to put it on the front and it's a tactile switch you're going to either remove or reduce the tactility significantly then i do an outside ring of lube on the spring I do it on the outside of the spring because I don't want any lube getting into the well at the bottom of the bottom housing because that'll make for a squishy, squishy feeling. Ah, much better. So not only does lubing remove that ping, but it actually helps to give it a more refined sound, almost a deeper sound, because obviously the ping is high pitched, but it stabilizes the sound of the switch. Yeah, that's much better. Um, I'm a big fan of the original Akko blacks, but I don't think I ever tried the jelly blacks. I, Akko CS blacks? The wing latch ones. Um, they've been updating their switch lineup as of late, so I'm still trying to keep up with all of them. Uh, because this is one of the major keys I'm gonna be using during the sound test, I'm gonna go ahead and just replace this one over here. This one so that we can get a good stock sound test. When we do this, let me put the stabilizer in first. Make sure they're locked. And they do appear to be mostly secure there's the tiniest amount of wobble and i don't think that's going to be significant to ca cause any ticking or any issues oh. all right so i'm going to put this one here and unfortunately if you only have a few switches lube not all of them and you're doing dealing with the steel plate even though it's lube it's still going to reverberate against all the rest of the switches that are not lubricated so I'm gonna put the stock switch back in here. I gotta get used to it. It's north facing. Now, some people prefer the north facing because they wanna have the shine through top. Um, if you have a south facing PCB and still want shine through, you can get a front or side shine through key cap that will shine out the front. So just in case, because I've heard a lot of people there's this whole debate about north facing south facing and interference with cherry keycaps which really truly isn't much of an issue anymore when it comes to switches within a long pole or switches that have had their 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 molds for their housing um restructured so that they no longer interfere with cherry so it's mostly a thing of the past but that that was the whole reason everybody's like oh you got to get south facing but honestly Get what you like because if you're getting newer switches or you're getting a switch you know is long pulled you're not going to have any issue if you choose to go with the cherry keycap profile despite it being unlubed and a steel plate it doesn't sound as bad as other 
keyboards that come with this configuration. Um, there's some that literally just, they just sound, they, they ring like a bell, especially if you hit it hard, but I'm getting a higher pitch, but unless I put my ear up to the keyboard, I, I don't really hear that ping, but I don't know if you can notice the difference with the mic so far away, but this is the lubed one. That's the unlubed one. Slightly higher pitched. Now, the Keycap colorway is honestly one of my favorite. Honestly, kind of reminds me of a Dasher and Dancer, uh, the MT3 Keycap sets, because of that light blue and on top of the darker blue. And um, But the black and the gold modifiers, I think, it's just, it's nice. It's really, I don't know, it pops and it's different. It's not like so different that it's foreign, but it's different enough to elicit joy. Do these things make you happy? Yes, these things make you happy. Anyway, let's go ahead and see what this looks like with the lights turned on. And there we go. The RGB is on and it's actually pretty good. Um, I usually like to kick up the feet. Oh, makes sense if you kick up the, the matching feet. But at this angle, I can see the lights just fine. And I mean, there's light in here, so I think it's coming through pretty good on the uh, over the video. But oh. all right, so we've got a caps lock indicator there. That may be charging. Let me see if this actually will tell us what the indicators mean. We got our technical specifications. It's got a 3,000 milliamp hour battery, weighs 900 grams. The keycaps are double shot PBT. Commands, backlight settings. Ah, here we go. Yes. So we've got the caps lock indicator. That is the battery level indicator. Though it doesn't say what color or if it will change color, like once it's charged or if it's low. So that I'll have to keep an eye out for. And this is the Windows lock key. So I'm going to figure doing, yep, function Windows is going to lock the Windows key so that you can't use it and accidentally, you know, get kicked out of a game, especially if you're in the middle of a, you know, really intense battle. A function window, again, will turn it off. It's nice that it has an indicator. So, you, you know, you're not like, why isn't my Windows key not working? Oh, it's locked. <laughs> now below we do have both a Mac and a Windows mode. Though when it's in USB mode, I'm going to say it's just the standard. Huh? Um, let me see. Yeah, because yeah, it's in Windows mode. So I'm kind of curious as to... That may be when you're in wireless. That's probably what it is. Yeah, because USB or wired. So we can probably switch the Mac the system modes hold down function and press right control to switch back and forth all right simple enough and of course in mac mode these are going to act as the um system command control center keys but yeah we definitely have some decent rgb on here so yeah we have some decent rgb and it does not look like the uh, switch is doing much interference uh, for the light and it's not affecting the light color sometimes the uh, polycarbonate tops uh, that are tinted a certain color will distort the color coming out of the RGB. So it's nice to see that it doesn't have that issue here. Now this one is definitely one that I'm going to have to come back to and mod because I know from my experience with modding Yako keyboards that with a little bit of elbow grease it's going to sound much much better. Um, though I, I will say I would have liked to have seen this come with either an aluminum, a PC, or even an FR4 plate. I think steel plates, honestly, just need to go the way of the Dodo Bird because there's no need for them. I know they're a little bit cheaper, but it's we're talking about pennies. And I, I don't mind paying a few dollars more to get a keyboard that has anything other than a steel plate. I don't mind tray mounted. I prefer gasket, but I've been using tray mounted keyboards my entire life, so I don't really have a problem with not having flex. But with this one, let's see. Yeah, it does not look like we have 
any flex whatsoever. That's the second time it's just locked up on me. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Do a factory reset. Hold the left window and right windows together for five seconds. All right. That reset the keyboard and now it's working. I must have pressed something. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Akko 5087B+. It is an ISO 3-mode TKL that comes with a 3000 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing in at 928 grams. It comes preloaded with Akko Jelly Black and Double Shot PBT Cherry keycaps in the Horizon colorway. It does have a tray mounted a steel plate. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 34 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 8 degrees. Using the first set of flip out feet, we'll take the back height to 41 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of 11 degrees. And using the final set of flip out feet, we'll raise the back to 50 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of 16 degrees. The MSRP for this keyboard is 114 euros or $107. So while this is a decent TKL, it's three mode, and it has a full set of keycap switches, it's hard for me to justify $100. Uh, it's a steel plate tray mount. Um, it comes with switches that aren't lubed. Uh, yes, I can mod it to get it better, but when $100, I mean, even with Monsgeek, that is a company or is a sister company to Akko, you know, offers a TKL, you know, three mode, fully loaded for $129, which is almost three times the weight of this one. And it's, I mean, this is a solid piece of keyboard and it comes with a PC plate and it comes with lubed switches. Um, it's difficult for me to say, hey, this is a great buy. This keyboard at $50, much better price. Um, then it's justifiable to say, okay, the time, the effort that I'm gonna put into it to mod it, to make it not ping, to either replace the switches with already lubed ones or actually take the time to lube all these switches. Then I've got a TKL that's, you know, wired and doesn't ping. And if I'm okay with, you know, tray mount as I am, I think it'd be a pretty good keyboard. I don't know if this is something that where they're trying to move older stock out of the way to come in with a new updated version. I really hope that's the case. But this two years ago, 2022 for a hundred bucks, perfect deal, great deal, comparative to the market then. But right now in the market for $99, I mean, there's the Leo Bog High 8 and High 75. Um, there's the Rainy 75. Uh, there's a bunch of Zing Men boards, Yunzi. I mean, there's aluminum kits that are literally $100 or less. Uh, some of them are bare bones, some of them are fully loaded. But aluminum, they come with PC plates, they're gasket mount. Um, some of them have Via. I mean, this uses Aqua Cloud Driver, which has gotten better, has improved significantly from when I first started using it. But it's Windows only. I'm a Linux guy. Via keyboard like a couple of the Akos that I have are VIA compatible um, the ACR top 40 and the 5075s um, they're QMK VIA I can load up my browser and I can program ev everything that I need to via VIA I can you know change my layers change the keys that select the RGBs I can do practically everything minus per key RGB that needs to be done in QMK and you have to actually code it and I know some people are like but well, I mean, it's, it's very, I mean, QMK source for the firmware, most of it's been written for you. You really only have to do the matrix. And then if you want to add functions for specific key color sets, you basically add a method and you set the key colors with the key codes in there. And then when you're in VIA, you would pass that code down to call that method and it will change your key colors if the MCU supports it, which most QMK MCUs will support it. But anyway, um, 
At $50, I think this would be a great buy. At the price that it is right now, it's hard for me to justify it. In 2024, a non-lubricated switch, uh, steel, tray-mounted keyboard, it's just, I, I can't justify it. And I like Akko. I, I love their products. I really hope that this is just trying to move some old inventory, but I really wish they would lower the price. Um, this for a, a beginner, especially, you know, say $50, but on sale for $35, this would be a great keyboard for a beginner because they can go ahead and practice modding. You know, they could take it apart, they could lube the switches and learn, you know, mods and, and everything while not spending that much. But $100 for a keyboard that I mean, sounds like a bell out of the box. This day and age, it's just, it's difficult to justify. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test, the Akko 50. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Akko 5087B Plus. I want to make sure I got that right. ISO. Uh, this is the uh, UK ISO but they have them in German, Norway, a couple other ones. So, I mean, that obviously is a plus for ISO users, but again, I'm looking at the keyboard as a whole. I do hope that you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. I like to get conversations going. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.